All right, so anybody, happy, happy New Year. I'm going to start again. Welcome to uh, this virtual Zoom reading. I'm so thrilled to be here today, and I'm so thrilled that we had such a great response. This is called Fire Burning. I don't want to fight. Dismissal can occur. Hudson Street is paced in bookstores and bars. Join me for our evening meal. Ignite the sparks of future flames. Can we forget the past when we were both emotionally detached? I order Mexican cocoa elixir. I feel the earth attacking, heart attacking, earthquake and aneurysm, blood pumps, pounds my heart muscle. Dividends divided, cylinders, boxes set aside. Imagine we are flying. Decide the direction of travel. Everyone wants to see the outcome. The light sometimes so blinding, lost in the darkness, we wiggled and squirmed, feel the bass pounding. The vacancy in your chest, the tightening of your throat, the stop of air, that was your breath, it's gone. The pendulum, the ticking beats, wrestling between the sheets, in the still of the moment of moving speed, follow the sound. Amazing as they told you it would be, filled with trinkets and thistle, crickets and tangled webs, decide your fate. Earth will continue to rotate. Familiar memories dissolve, gases evaporate, intertwine. Hindsight is 2020. Imagine it so. Juggling chores and expectations, keep doing what you're doing. Living in a rat maze, avoid the roadblocks, navigate the sun. Orion stars drift penniless across a quartz colored sky. Rotate with me. We'll steady each other along the way. Gravity and universal pressure. Vows of love that we confess. Xerox, copy and paste me near your heart. Listen for my love in Zephyrus floating in the night sky. Thank you very much. And with that, we will go to Jason Snyderman. And... The last black hole. The last black hole was not the last. The last black hole was everything in the entire universe collapsed into a space even smaller than you can imagine. The last black hole was the end of time and then it exploded into a new time. And then there was a whole new universe, the one we know and what is coming at the next black hole will be another whole new universe, but not the one we know. The one coming will be a universe where nothing of us will have survived, not even the tiniest speck, except maybe the rediscovered truth that there was a time in which we lived, though this truth will be our truth, not theirs, but you knew that, didn't you? That every truth we have is a human truth, that as long as we're the ones looking, everything will always look like us. And as sure as every human will be born and die, there is only our time, our journey to the black hole and our journey away from it. And don't be discouraged. We do not give birth astride the grave as some have said, but rather we are born into a picture in which we are only a pixel. And as the pigment shall never know the painting, so we are fixed within our place. And we must not fear because we cannot see the design and this I call faith, knowing that the last black hole is coming. And on the other side will be time and space. And on the other side will be time and space. And on the other side will be time and space, but without us. That's from um, Hold Me Tight, my 2020 book. And I do run a Monday night reading series um, if you are interested, KGB uh, Monday Night Poetry, if you um, private message me in the um, chat with your email, I will add you to the list. And we're starting up again on January 11th with Don Lindy Martin and Carl Phillips. And you could also put that in the chat if you want to. You could oh, just thank put, you. I will do that. If, yeah, anybody could use the chat to promote themselves if you want, if you have a reading or if you have a book. So feel free. This is a way to communicate with each other. And I believe I will be able to print out the chat and email it to everybody. So you don't have to worry about taking notes. So if you could load it up with all kinds of stuff, 
And I do Fahrenheit open mic on first Sunday of the month, but not this month because I'm doing this and they're gonna be tired on the first Sunday of the month this week. So anyway, after that, we're going to go to Claire Moed. CEO Moed is next. Unmute yourself. Hey, welcome, happy new year, and here's to love. He said, he said, okay, I don't wanna sound like a poet, when I say this, but the words just bubble through my teeth. Is he for real? Climbing women's hips in his poems, those massive thighs I'd only seen on TV. I want him to climb me. I feel jealous of the year 1994 when he wrote about another woman I suddenly wished I was. He said he wanted to hug me first he saw me. We just grinned like old strangers that moment, 86 and Lex. He said he couldn't read my face. I stared at his lips, not the paintings he led me to. I wanted to look like a movie he'd make. He said he'd catch the next train and then the next train and then the next, and then we just stood there, rush hour, swarming around us. Later, I sit back beaming, a bathrobe tied around my hungry waist, but the wet and the smell and the shock steam up. And when my roommates abruptly lean forward to hear what clothes he wore, I slam my legs shut to hide sudden private wildness with my hands, but I couldn't stop. All morning, all evening, all night, no sleep wondering. He said, he said, for Phil, before grassroots closed. The bar, still empty enough for a weekday afternoon, John kept pouring me free drinks. He said it was because I'd been around so long, least he could do for another old timer. But I think it was because I remember Karen, the only woman bartender for miles around back then, the one who died of breast cancer before anyone talked of such things. We both recalled her mob boyfriend, a made man who baby talked when he was drunk. And I pointed to the beat up photo of Frazier beaming from behind the bar. The only black bartender for miles around back then, the one who died of AIDS before anyone talked of such things. We both recalled him and Wrinkles every Saturday night, dancing on the bar to New York, New York as we all sang along. And John poured me another drink and the rare light from St. Mark's filtered through windows that hadn't been washed since before anyone died and for a couple of minutes, life wasn't missing all the people we loved. Happy New Year, everybody. I love that one. That's in the anthology, the Silver Tongue Devil anthology, which I did not mean to plug, but since she read that piece, um, after three years, this is finally out and um, more information on Facebook. And next up, we have Peter Mara. And meet yourself, Peter. Hello? Yes, you got it. Okay, thanks. Of course, I lost my place now. Okay, uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Everybody hear me all right? Yes, Happy New Year. Yeah, thanks. I'm going to read a selection from Pipo Rama uh, from 2017, which I haven't read in a while. It's called Blue Movie, Signs of Property, Crushed Fingers No Longer Play, Attracted by Sexy, Slimy Laughter from Behind the Curtain. The stage is dirty, a semicircle in red, and her flesh trembles. Zoom in close on her throat quivering as droplets of sweat form and shimmer. It's an illness. The fingers her own play quietly as she sits in the adrenaline pool, waiting for the film to start. She recognizes herself and her companion in the seat adjacent, not moving, knows she really isn't there. Not really. And they are both encased in glass that is etched with words from the language that they forgot a long time ago. Some random mouths link together, some random figures caress. The medical muses taste the hysteria of a humiliated sequence of time. Things go awry, as always, a special impression during her travels. Tonight, the cruelty of the acute scholar will make itself apparent. In a script authored by the doctor himself, describing the struggle of euthanasia for when life runs out, already endured, 
but searched through with a flick of the tongue. Stolen kisses in the greenhouse, numerous feelings in the room upstairs. Caught between the screeching machines, the whole night was filled with substance. She moaned as addiction dug in, fucking the emotional response to the drug related stimuli, consume it with the environmental cues associated with it. I kissed her lips and wrapped her up now. Why shouldn't we be enjoying it together? Another form of drug therapy involves a mess, a mood altering substance caught in the behavior of her mouth. A black spot turned into another year already. A razor caused the disorder. Clothes were stripped off as something was presented in the media of the latest century to be revealed. Basking in their humiliation and what she wanted, a supposed des descent of the three women, the womb rising, knowing about others in humiliation. It's Sunday afternoon. The birds can be heard outside, creatures singing in a disquieting monotone. These creatures have no faces. These forms have blank stares. She touches our face, saliva burns. We try to leave, but are unable to do so. They fly so slowly, just outside the bay window, here to stay, dead heat bang. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And next up, we have Vincent Quattrochi, all the way from, not Buffalo, He's in, he works in Fredonia, but where do, you, it's, where do you actually live? Deepest, darkest Dunkirk on the shores of Lake Erie. Good afternoon, everyone. It's been a terrible now, right now. Some may be a little hungover and other people are cold, stone, sober, but we're all another year old. Okay, we're gonna do short poems here because they're good because if they're not any good, they're over soon. And if you like them, they're good because they're over soon. Okay, these are from June Fragments. Um, so where the hell is he anyway? Probably drinking himself into a doormat or down the kitchen drain. Check the fridge. His face used to be on a milk carton. Hey, Mo, that last poetry reading, he left them thinking they had just found the fourth stooge. Your emotional lottery ticket. Just count yourself lucky you never ended up with me in the dark places of yourself. Drinking with uh, scratch and sniff. Just itch. And bottoms up. Um, preferred bumper sticker. Look, if you're on a ride by bumper, at least pull my hair. Uh, everybody's a critic, but yeah, sure, I might have been so much cheap theater, but you never had such good lines in any other scene in your life. Uh, stock market relationship crash. She was like money in the bank that had already had a run on it. Look, nobody wants to hear it, but you know, they all still ask. Three things to do with a poet. Nod your head and smile begrudgingly. Kick some ass immediately or kiss them and have a good laugh. Millennial job performance evaluation attributed to my son. In Brooklyn, where somebody always knows better, while he works in Manhattan, where it's been, what have I done wrong for you lately? What's the matter? I noticed you're alone tonight. You run out of arm candy? Uh, and make mine ground glass. What kind of bottled beer do you have? Bartender routed off a list. Of course, they had everything except the swill he wanted. He shrugged just bring me a draft of anything. Bartender comes back with a tall Pilsinger glass. And as he said it on the bar, it shattered. Bartender went, well, I'll be damned. He said, that's okay. I didn't really want it anyway. Um, calling it quits. On the lake shore. Can you go past Queen. the time? No, oh, I got my no, time. Sorry. I think I'm pretty good. good. Apologize. I'm keeping an eye on it. Um, 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah, absolutely. Professor Meltdown. And sir, would you like to explain to this faculty inquiry committee why you sprayed the glass with that fire extinguisher yesterday evening during your lecture? He said, sure, because they weren't on fire. Um, and of course, there would be Kentucky refried. Listen, I want my old Colonel Sanders back. Digging cyber seas are up. Friends, droids, and citizenoids, lend me your limited attention spans and lastly so you actually watch naked and afraid sometimes when i feel naked and afraid and i'm thinking of you thank you very much good luck thank you vincent i apologize for my interruption there i don't know okay but next up we have j-lo diamond okay i'm gonna read two short poems uh, there was recently a horrific fire in a church in the East Village on the corner of 2nd Avenue and 7th Street. 
And a uh, year, uh, five years prior, there was a horrific gas explosion right across the street. This poem is about that. It's called On Thursday Afternoon. There is a whoosh, then a loud puffing sound that shatters the ears of those sipping sake. Then a shower of screams, flames, and desperate climbs out of windows onto the street. Three buildings gone, a giant hole on the block, and a search for remains ensues. Two men blown apart, 11 buildings evacuated, a hundred homeless, all from a seedy contractor who siphoned the gas and hid his tracks as he swiftly rescued the landlady's son. And the other one was just published by Origami Press, The Best of Kindness for 2020. It's called On the Subway. And um, a lot of us have missed probably being on the subway, as strange as it sounds. And I do hope that we can get back to our routine. On the subway. On the subway, the nanny, large and dark, sits her two charges down while she stands. She hands the boy a demi bottle of water. As he opens his mouth, out comes a wad full of gum. He presents it to her like it is the most wondrous of gifts. She accepts it gently, bared hands without reproach, no words that it's dirty, has germs, or carries disease. She discreetly reaches for the empty Skittles wrapper in his sister's hands and wraps it inside the crackling foil. I long to be these children the nanny, or even the used piece of Wrigley's they so lovingly share. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, the next five readers will be Madeline, Philip, Pat Hammer, Bob Heeman, and Peter Kozlowski. And to start off, we'll have Madeline, except she just, there she is. Hi everybody, as I've been, as I've coined Happy Better New Year. And I have to say that without Facebook, without Zoom, I don't know what my, my state of mind would be. It's been a lifeline. I had dismissed Facebook, I would never go on it. And it's been just so joyous to support people, to see what people are doing, to tell them how I am, you know, find out how they are, all of that stuff. And out of that, I posted something on the Rainbow Project from um, Poets Wear Prada, and it was nominated uh, as Best of the Net 2020. So I'm going to read this right now. The Blind Man and Poet. He'd never seen a woman. Sight is one color in her palette. The way she says his name sounds like seersucker, terry cloth, old blues. They question what is green, verde, there. It's cucumber, she says. Envy's green, he says. He removes her fine silk blouse. She closes her eyes. When he slides fingers down her silky arm, each inch, announces itself. He traces the rest of her outline, hangs it on his mind. Their breathing's bumpy now, they empty, smell like cucumbers, like new beginnings. Happy Better New Year to you all. Adeline, and next up we have Philip Jambri. Four quick poems. True Romance. I still fantasize running in slow motion across the platform at the train station in Bruges into the arms of my lover as she steps down from the Paris train. Yeah, I'm still that fucking romantic. Empty Pages. I'm now an imagined writer, a fictional creation in a real world, yet still believing myself a writer as the muse remains muzzled dreaming of greenier pastures where pandemics no longer exists and life experience happens with stories to be told. She waits silent and wordless as the body count mounts, marking time for history while I remain lost on empty pages. Distracted. 
I wanted to write a poem tonight about the ecstasy of love and the intensity of sex with my partner. But 2,000 Americans died today and I got distracted. I wanted to write a poem tonight about pulling a kite string in Central Park on a beautiful summer Sunday. But 2,000 Americans died today and I got distracted. I wanted to write a poem tonight about East Village dive bars and the music and the good times we had. But 2,000 Americans died today. I got distracted. I wanted to write a poem tonight about looking up at the New York skyline and seeing the beauty of all that I love here. But 2,000 Americans died today. And I was distracted. I wanted to write a poem about the fire at Middle Collegiate Church and how sad I felt. But 2,000 Americans died today. I was distracted. I wanted to write a poem tonight about 2,000 Americans who died today, but I can't find the words. Love walks in. Love walks in that night out of nowhere, says, I'm back. I ain't looking and I ain't ready, but here comes love swaggering in like some drunk ass sailor saying, take it or leave it, baby. I'm thinking now, I just might be game for this one. So on a booze-soaked bar night, I call love's bluff. And what looks at the time like a surefire train wreck in the making turns out to be instead a five-year gold bar for two bodies bound now in love, romance, and poetry. Two broken hearts healed and blessed with redemption. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. And next up, we have Pat Hammer. Happy New Year, everyone. Usually I'm reading from Fort Lee, New Jersey. I'm up here in the foothill of the Ramapo Mountains in Pompton Lakes, Passaic County, just outside of Patterson. Two short poems. One is from my collection, Paramus Local, imagining my parents going out on New Year's Eve. Gentry, mom and dad are going out. I can tell in the not so usual Saturday night fuss and bustle can tell in the rituals, the bathing, primping, best clothes, dressing, they both take joy in. The Gina Tay, the Old Spice, the Cameo brooch, the masculine star, sapphire, white gold, diamond ring. The patent leather pocketbook and pumps, the white gloves, the stole, the silver scarf, mom's fresh pack of unopened Ken. The cigar dad smokes before leaving out in the Florida room, dressed in a dark suit, dress, shirt, ironed, solid tie. His hair brushed with shine, his hair brushed shiny with brill cream, his dress shoes shining too, a mirror on the night. He dons his Homburg, mom clutches his hands. They leave the sitter instructions. I leave, they leave like one night a week gentry. All night I wonder, even in bed, where in the world, in Paramus, do they go? And finally, each year brings things that go away, never to come back. Here's a poem about Woolworths said by grandmother in the Bronx. We get lost in Woolworths. Nana and I, down the long, narrow aisles. She's looking for pin cushions, hairpins, corn pads for her feet. I yearn for books, for paper, pens, to help me record our story. Summer afternoons such as this, we wander through buttons, notions, bottles, butter dishes, needles and thread, artificial flowers and the like. Outside again, breathing fresh air, Nana buys me a science workbook from a nun, cocooned in black, selling on the street, filled with riddles and questions to be solved. Thank you, guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, I just want to make a correction. I mentioned Bob Heeman was next, but he's actually in the next reading group. So he won't be reading now. He's in the four to six group. That was my mistake. Even though he was here, I counted him in. So next up, we have Peter Kozlowski. Yeah. 
you hear that? Yes, sounds good. Sorry, I didn't realize I was coming up. I that's see okay. to get it so you can see the top of that uh, Kerouac poster, and then that's uh -huh. like that shirt. Yep. See the shirt, Philip? My books, my books, as Pete Dolak used to always say. Wearing a silver tongue devil t shirt. Getting it all is gone, singing that song. Until I ask for a couple of days, I need to be my kind. How good it can be to be free. That overpowers music to me. That boy's never meant to be. Yeah, we can only stop singing that song. Just a little while. Happy New Year. Yeah, nice, nice. Happy, Happy New, Year. New Year, Peter. One thing I really miss is um, live music during this pandemic. So thanks for bringing music to our show. Um, Iris, so can you hear us, Iris? Can, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Hi, this is Iris Ben Schwartz. Thank you for having me here. My new book is called, oh my God, I forgot what it's called. Brisket for one will be out later this year. Okay, two pieces. Sorry. We, we all. Her man screams because he cannot hear her. She screams, but he cannot hear her. She wants to scream after the waiter eases a platter of two fried eggs, two strips of bacon, and two slices of white toast, dry, onto her paper plate back. Now she understands. A waiter simply nodded after each of her menu requests and brought what he's already heard, or what he would like to wolf down on his next break. The only thing he got right? Two of every three. Later, in their apartment, a man crumbled onto their couch and weeps. My second one. Trump, December 2020. Silly fight, like a brain-damaged boxer, joyously jabbing, barely able to pray, cauliflower ears closed to truth. Thank you. 
Thank you, Iris. Okay, next up we have Karen Newberg. Hi everyone, happy new year. Happy new year. I'm going to read two. First is called Advice. As you approach the undulating skin of the verge, don't get lost in its shimmer, which can lure you into believing you've arrived and into forgetting where you're going. First, you may need to pass through a darkness. Don't succumb to its comforting touch. Don't be fooled by its feral <laughs> promise. Reach out your hands, feel your way. When you arrive, shake hands, shake hands with yourself. Shake hands with yourself, shaking hands with the universe. And the second one is called, Let Me Call It a Garden. And it's, um, the title is a line taken from Natalie Diaz's poem, From the Desire Field. Let me call it a garden. Let me turn the green into my new dream. Let me roam along the path that leads to the forest of song. Let me find what I've lost in the passage between years. Let me roll through the garden, collect the yellows and purples, bathe in the luxury of butterfly and bee. Let the hummingbird hum in the afternoon light. Let the firefly light in the blue hour. Let me sing. Let, the, let me sing in the forest. Let me sing of the forest. Let me be a tree. Let me reach, reach into the song of the seasons. Let the seasons keep their pace steady and promise. Let the promise be a garden. I'm lost in a dream with no garden. I'm lost in a world where green is lost, where creatures are lost, some who we never met or named. I want to undream the present and walk backwards into the canopy of the forest. Leap from tree to tree. Let me sing with the birds, sing with the flowers. Let me sit in the crook of a branch. Let me be a nest. Thank you. Karen. And um, next up we have Susan Wyman. Hi everyone, happy new year. Happy to be here. So first I'm going to read Don't Sit Next to Me, which was a poem written when I first started taking the subway. Don't sit next to me. Some days I forget. I walk out without my mask. Pale blue disposables take me by surprise. Is this real? Remember the days of small crowded tables at Cornelia Street Cafe? I love the crowds of New York City, the restaurants, cafes, bookstores, the subways. Crowded has taken on a new meaning. Anxious when the subway doors open, I scrutinize everyone. Instead of reading, I think, don't sit next to me. No mask, I move to another seat or car. Too crowded, I wait for the next train. When I arrive at my destination, I remove my mask, wash my hands, and take a deep breath. And now I'm going to read from, these are vignettes from a piece called Life in the Time of COVID. And I'm going to read one vignette called Orthodox Wedding on Zoom. My nephew's wedding was the first time I dressed up since the pandemic. I wore a long sleeve black velvet dress with blue jeans, eye makeup, lipstick, dangle earrings, and an antique necklace. The wedding took place in April 2020 because the rabbi would not change the date. Despite this being an arranged marriage, he feared that once the young couple was engaged, they might be tempted by carnal pleasure. It was a windy day and the chuppah fell and hit the bride's father on the head. The other men in the minion chased the canopy around the yard. Due to their faulty Wi-Fi, there was a sudden blur and I missed the excitement. L'chaim, I joined in and picked up my wine glass filled with water as everyone toasted the bride and groom. There were over 70 people at the wedding. I waved to my family members and greeted the bride's family and members of the synagogue. Mazel tov and nachas, everyone wished the bride and groom good luck and happiness in Yiddish and English. There were breakout rooms for both the bride and the groom's family. I arrowed my way from screen to screen and began 
speaking to strangers in their Zoom boxes. Using my iPad, I photographed the lovely couple and a few family members. After the happy occasion and having met my obligations, I changed my outfit and returned to my schlumpy COVID clothes and met my friends for a walk. Thank you. Susan. Okay, next up we have uh, Susanna Rich and then Bert Baroff. Bert, are you ready? You're going next. Go ahead, Susanna Rich is up. Hi, I'm from Wild Nice Productions. Thank you, our, our impresarias and impresario for doing this um, poem. A 2020 pandemic, uh, PN. The first rush was for toilet paper. The Costco size grab and hoard 96 roll shrink wrap bricks stacked in the back of the warehouse barn. A Taj Mahal igloo we attacked to pile up our platform carts high enough to hide our shamed faces as we pushed our cash like massive babies to the checkout queues, dodging the glares of those too late for their stash or coming back for more after a parking lot brawl over the U-Hauls jammed up as if for a Girl Scout jamboree with giant paper marshmallows. Just how big is your ass? We called out to each other and covering your ass? Ass wipe! Look at you, the Halloweeny family. Correction, gooey, goosey night crew. And new clothes for mummy? Next came toilet paper roll earrings, tiny sea pearl fabrications dangling from thumb-sized brass rings like fancy bed, bath, and beyond toilet paper holders, or from gold-filled chains, always the leading edge of the roll pulling over like a waterfall, not under like a beard. Nine months of meet meeting out our single plies or gleefully unrolling and unrolling our thousand seed thousand sheet donuts like cats on speed. Nine months wheeling in Amazon delivery, uh, deliveries of the next mattresses of Cottonelle to season in the garage. Where mice set up a honeycomb of condos in the little cardboard tunnels. We are getting our shit together on you. Yes, tube. Feeds of how to craft toilet paper roll ornaments. Flatten the tube, scissor half inch rings, glue glitter glaze, and glam the ovals into snowflakes, wreaths, angels, butterflies, advent calendars, birdhouses, owls, cats, silent wind chimes. Hang them on the cherry trees you garlanded with your vanity fair, your brawny. Hook them into your spray painted paper, paper towel roll Christmas trees. Hot glue them in a line of menorahs and Kwanzaa canaras with electric bulbs to twist on each night. Spend more time tweeting on the bowl so you can keep the rolls coming. Be happy for the shits, for wiping out, for, so you can wipe up your nose and ass. Pee on you, COVID. We're your peons no more. We get pissed enough to get pissed and piss and join a pissing match or two on Zoom peons. The more paper to roll out, the better. And here's a, here's a toilet paper roll. <laughs> and here's a toilet paper roll, Angel. Happy squeezable new year, everyone. Thanks for being here. All right, so uh, is Bert, oh, that Bert is ready. All right, so the next readers after Bert will be Mayara Perez, Billy Lamont, Oliver Bear, and Cheryl Simla, and Zeb Torres. So we're next up, we're gonna have Bert Barra. Unmute yourself, Bert. Hello, and I wish you all normalcy in the new year. Thank you. The garden of one another. A seedling is planted and then another. The seed takes root and then another. They know not but one. New life in suckling soil and then another. The stem leaps up, reaches, stretching and then another. Unaware. Leaves grow and spread, nearing one another. A bud barely in water, 
and men and others that have no knowledge. The flower holds to a manner of color than another. Petals walk the power to test them and then another. Alas, they know not. The serendipity of the bee, pollen one and another. Blooming flourishes in one and another. They rejoice in now knowing. We will and die as nature wills, memories, waves of embrace, aromas, memories of eyes filled, of eye filled views, dazzlingly undimmed, memories of love flourish with every braided breath, promises in perpetuity in the garden of one. Thank you, Bert. Thanks for being here. And next up, we have Mayara Perez. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Hola. Uh, Mireya and uh, Feliz Año. Um, I'm dedicating this poem to Armando Manzanero, cantante, compositor. Uh, from uh, Mexico, from Yucatan, and he recently passed. Um, and um, one of his most famous songs is Adoro. So it's the title of my poem, Adoro. Adoro, adoro the twirls of my flower dress, footwork fast to the drums, spaghetti straps strain, breath beat, invite the pause. Adoro, the careful croon, piano, soft. Adoro, flows, your hand, glide to my waist, my arm to your shoulder. Adoro, our dance, suspiros. Adoro, adoro, incantation is us. Then these troubled times tell me Adoro, adoro, is mine. Mis manos, mis ojos, adoro. Mi existencia, mi sentir. Yo te adoro, vida mía. Adoro, adoro. Gracias. Thank you very much. And next up, we have Billy Lamont. Hello, everyone. Hello, welcome. Working slave all day, family times are too few. Haiku, a cuckoo. L -l -l Look at me cross eyed or unkindly, and I'll sue. Haiku, a cuckoo. Do not tell the truth, hide it, whatever you do. Haiku, a cuckoo. In the grand finale of these ones, I talk to myself and never listen to you. Haiku, a cuckoo. <laughs> I'm reading from my latest book. I'm going to do another short one. It's called Words Ripped from a Soul Still Bleeding. I'm a recording artist and a poet for a number of years from New York. And uh, it's Words Ripped from the Soul Still Bleeding, Poems for the Future Edition. And locally in New York, it's, at, it's for sale at McNally, Jackson Books in Soho and Rough Trade in Brooklyn. And um, nationally, Barnes Noble, internationally, Amazon. And I'd like to read a poem for you now, a short poem that is inspired by David Amran, it was a friend's acquaintance, but it was kind of by accident. I was driving as a single dad with my son on Easter a couple years ago in my car, and I was inspired with this poem, and it's, it's for you. The frequency of life, love vibrations. Floating, floating, floating on your mind's wave. The frequency of life vibrates with creation. We are energy made up of cells, electrons. The smallest part of a cell is energy vibrating. That energy is sound, our own unique, magnificent song. The music within me, the fabric of life, Yahweh's frequency, 
our soul song. Soulful, wonderful, dancing in ourselves, love vibrations. The micro, the macro lens. Even my cells sing praises to Yahweh, the tree within, the creator in me. Yahweh sighs. Yahweh sighs. The breath of life, love vibrations of the spirit. The idea has life, is alive, is alive, is alive. The idea, the idea, the words blossom, create, vibrate, vibrate. Forms ourselves, reforms our world. The frequency of light. So uh, that's my poem prayer for a greater 2021 to everyone. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. Um, Thank you. I also want to say for people who came in late, um, we're using the chat as a general way for you to promote your books or anything you have your readings. And um, I believe I'll be able to print out the chat and, and send it to everybody. So if you put information in there, like you have another, you know, an open mic or whatever you want to do. So that'll be our information in case you didn't hear that earlier. All right, next up we have Oliver Bear. Hello, happy new year, everyone. Happy new year. Um, all right, I'm gonna read this poem. I wrote this last year, I believe. I've been trying to remember our time together, backtrack our evacuation route, that New Year's we danced, shook and swayed the stars from their loft to our feet, a pattern aligned with stellar breadcrumbs. Winter's breath kissed us, lips ice wet against our cheeks. Chill shock. I walked you home through the forest. The spring in our step returned in March, dub stepping into your bed. Rainy night liquid prayers roaring, our bleeding resounding off the walls. Waterproof paper, people banishing the outsiders. Summer doldrums left us wanting for breath. A tango cloaked in humidity's hug. Tight enough, we have to time our gasps to the terminal clock. A fall lost in the blanket of leaves covered us in the decay of unknown dreams. A tarantella of anger blooms with the loss of flora. A kudzu of fights and flights. Snakeskin flakes off the issues. Pigs running toward snowmen of our fears. We skate, slip, and slide into others' arms, trying to bury our memory. It's time to uncover ourselves so we can hop the train back to each other. And then I'm going to read a short one from my book. Um, Poor frost tentacles scratch at glass with frozen landscape gardens. Bitterness flows through pain crack, bringing mad sighing and singing inside out. Blood waned light reverse melting from the floor back into the window waste, refracting us. Bending our bodies, thoughts, words back to the afternoon, highlighting our skin scratches, tattoos representing our coupled bond, promises made in madness, symbols whose imprint can only be melted by a garnet poultice. Ice trees beckon me outside. The path they describe that their brachiated arms scratch into the air promises freedom. Behind me, pages and cloth rustle, whispers, of a path we need. Thank you. Happy New Year, everybody. Best wishes. Good luck. Thanks, Oliver. Thanks for being here and Happy New Year to you too. And next up we have Cheryl Helene Simler. You are Hi. I'm very Hi excited to be here. Well, uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you. Um, my name is Cheryl H. Simler, and I'm a singer, songwriter, and poet. Um, I'm going to start by um, introducing a segment of a song that I wrote called The Lady Luck Blues. And then after that, I'm going to follow 
with a what started out as a poem, and I'm going to sing it, and that's called Before the Clearing. Steady, Lord, steady. I see a slot machine sailing. Steady, Lord, steady. I see a slot machine coming. And I'm ready to greet you. I've got the lady luck. And this next piece, again, is Before the Clearing. Everyone meets and needs a meadow of hope. Every soul seeks love's embrace. I know a woman who counted her blessings, then swept away the rain. I saw a writer bury his journal. His story is finally safe. Spin, skip, and suckle. The babes, they do chuckle. For once again, the tides are changing. Back in the day before the clearing, we cherished romance, walked hand in hand. Hop, run, and wiggle with plenty of giggles, our lives of simpler ways. Spin, skip, and suckle, the babes, they do chuckle, for once again the tides are changing. Amen. Amen to all the poets and the artists and all the heroes of this past year. May everyone be happy, healthy, and vibrant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. You too. Great. Very good. Next up, we have Zeb Torres. All right. I am unmuted, right? Yes. Great. Yes, you are. I'm gonna stand and stretch. Hope ascending, one staccato cool night, riding waves of swelling tone. A fanfare heralding a soiree, sublime spirits and their partners spiraling nightward arise. I wish I was a fisherman, tumbling on the sea, far away from dry land and its bitter memories, casting out my sweet line with abandonment and love. No ceiling bearing down on me, set the starry skies above. I wish I was the brakeman on a hurtling fever train, crashing headlong into the heartland like a cannon in the rain, with the beating of the sleepers and the burning of the coal. On a night that's full of light, on a night that's full of soul. Think it through, past the instinctive and the reflective, and reflexive, beyond the conditioned responses and those that are socially acceptable. Sift out the obvious and the way it's always been. Filter the images that come to mind without reflection, that bound into view as if they've come into contact with fire through a well-polished lens that corrects distortions, enhances perceptions, enables you to apprehend the subtle affectations to discern the discrepant motivations underlying a plot twist, a radical change of heart, to fathom the al amalgam of incidents and episodes predating the tale's conception as you delve into the abyss encompassing the four corners of the page where primordial incantations and hurry creeds are catalyzed into a wellspring of ambivalence that nourishes all variants of creation. I know that I'll be loosened from these bonds that hold me fast and the chains all around me will fall away at last on this fine and fateful day. I will hold you in my arms. We will ride on the train. I will be the fisherman, light in my head, you in my heart. Revived by the storm, light in my head, you in my heart. Our world reborn, 
Stellar blazes emanating beats to burst, syncopating flares, fade dispersed, smoldering embers silently burst. A hopeful spark streaks across the universe. Fishing Blues is by the Water Boys. Happy New Year, Healthy New Year. See you soon. Hey, Zev. I hope we didn't cut you off there. You did have 30 seconds. <laughs> We have Sue Polo coming up next, and I'm sorry I didn't give you a, um, a heads up for that, but you are next on the list, Sue. Go ahead. Buddy. All right, so uh, I have three short poems. And now what did I do with my glasses? Okay, well, this should work. Like a stone, I turn over revealing the other side of me. I am covered with questions. I am covered with ideas. My dreams take me wandering to places with no name, with people I could know. Feelings put my heart in a knot. And that was called Stone. And this is called Nocturnal. Flies have eyes. They sleep at night. Buzz, buzz, buzz the whole day long. The darkness falls. Flies rest. Bees sleep, curled up together, the way I like to sleep with you. The last thing I see before the sleep of flies and bees. And then one more somewhere here. Oh, here it is. This is called All Things. Before the dawn, all things sleep, your heart and soul at rest, lest you weep for those estranged, estranged, them that took the final test. Be not sad, find joy in spirit, lives that live the hilt of swords. Precious days have we to tender, simple shares to seasons past, Give thine effort to unravel hearts endearing life to last. Thank you very much and happy new year, everybody. I'm so glad to see you all. And I hope to see you all in 2021 in the actuality. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Sue. And um, the next year readers will be Janet Ristino and Cindy Hockman and, and Ellen Rickberg, just to give you a little heads up. So Janet Ristino, you are next. All right, can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, loud and clear. Oh, terrific, happy new year, everybody. We made it through. Happy 2021. Uh, thank you, Linda and Madeline, Philip, everybody involved with getting this together. Uh, I want to just um, put out uh, a, a dear friend, Pat Cristiano, passed away on April 4th, 2020. Uh, we were friends for 30 years. He died of an inoperable brain tumor, and um, I miss him dearly. He was part of the Rhymes family, so I just want to say, hey, Pat, hello, you with us here today. All right, all right, all right. We are in the Zoom room, or is it a shroom room? We are mushrooming in 2021. Now don't be a buffoon or a baboon. Enough doom and gloom. No West Side Story womb to tomb story. 2021. Let's go forth with guts and glory. We are in the Zoom room. Baboom, 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 Send up the trial balloon. Let the Lotharios croon, bada bing, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. In the Zoom room, it's boss or boom. We are in the Zoom room. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. <laughs> and I have a short poem from my book, uh, which is, oh, the glare, the glare. It's called Love's Body. Uh, it's poems and artwork. You can get it on eBay. Okay. This is called Poem Written on a Chivas Ad While Sober. I remember doing this in the East Village Bar one day, one night. Hey, it's called Go, Go Write. Write something lush. Go, be fertile. 
and ripen in the sun with melon lips, milking breasty women Pacific in their oceans and emotions and wishes for unending joy. Go, go be fertile, luscious and, and leafy like, like the jungle at high noon with the moon's memory placing its hand on your shoulder. Say good night, Gracie. As a bee on a bee line, as me on an incline, I am a feline looking to dine with you. Let the play begin, quiet on the set, because the sun is about to set in your eyes. Say good night, Gracie. Say good night, Gracie. Thank you. Be healthy, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that a lot. We need right. fun. Yeah. Yes, I miss fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just Next want to up. say I'm be stepping out. I'm sorry, I'm freezing my butt off in the park. Um, okay, the well, we'll be here all day. You can find us yeah, when you get I, home to your laptop. I'm going to walk a bit and then I'll come back. Okay. Thank right. you, Sue, for coming. Thank you. Okay. Um, next up, um, we have Cindy Hackman is next. Um, unmute yourself. Okay. Um, unmute yourself. Okay. Please. Can you hear me? Please. This poem was uh, translated into Turkish, but I will read it in English. It's called What I Would Do With Your Secret. If you tell me your secret, I will keep it under my derby hat. I will keep it under my green beret. I will tuck it under my satin pillow. I will dissolve it under my hungry tongue. I will mix it with my errant blood. I will shoot it into my impatient veins. I will shoot it up to bloody Mars. I will comb it through my golden hair. I will shove it under my bitten nails. I will place it inside Pandora's box. I will stuff it into my Burberry boots. I will pour it into my vodka flask. I will stick it into the thorn in my side. I will whisper it to myself at the end of the day. I will recite it in my devout prayers. I will lay it down on a wooden bier. I will shape it in my careful hands and make it into a glorious poem. And just a real quick one called So Why Can't We? Even in Damascus, they wear their damn masks made of Damask. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year Happy to New you, Year. Too. Thank you. Okay, next up we have Ellen prober Rickberg. Hi, thank you for doing this, it's great. Um, I have two things coming up. One is my book called Why is Grandma Naked? Caring for an, a for an Aging Parent. You can follow me if you want an advanced copy on Goodreads. You can uh, email me at ellenrittbergauthor at gmail.com and ellenrittbergauthor is my Facebook page. And I have a Kelsey uh, books uh, coming out of my poetry in June called He's Walking Wider. Sorry for the promotion. Anyway, this is, was created in Bowery Poetry Club something. Mind Rant Rock. Closing my eye, not asleep, but not awake, the conscious mind conjoined with nether mind. Looking inward, I see reflective eye, see skein of wool or twigs, port wine, the color of blood. Time passes, a different time. Just yesterday, I observed eye closed, but fully awake, sentient even. Green, green, blue, blue, green, unsure which predominated. Write it down, write it down, injunction. I am older, I grow fair. I fare less, but not less well. There's no less growth. Displaced dysplasia, the hips jut out, just so. Signposts, rented out, rooted out, bought, but not for sale. Less aura, more concatenation, this Quarry mass, this throng of small particulate mass, seen perceived by no other than myself. It had a lightness, a kinesthesia, subatomic or atomic. Is there a distinction? The mind not needed, 
is sewn and gleaned, worn down to a finish, just so, how so, a bauble, all flash and flood and flow, and this parasympathetic response, this welling up, uh, lack of touch, texture, smell, I live alone, not really, not cinematically, I pun unseemly, once therefore therefrom, it is not convention, it is not want or need, there is a dislocation in act of line break choices, a soullessness, ha hear mine, lo, thrum, hip so, hope so, dip so, dope so, I do not use even life fair to say sadly on bad days. So let us say this is eyeball bloat, a new day in shades of persimmon ochre, technicolor, this division, 4D, and sadly or gladly or all of it abovely, it is enough. Thank you. Very much. Um, next up, we have Alice Sanford. I'm here for you from Nashville, Tennessee. And in this Welcome. year of COVID, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good. Um, in this year of COVID, I've been paying a lot more attention to things than I think I usually do. This poem's called, If You Listen. Each spring at daybreak, mating pigeons moan. At dusk, mosquitoes whine and brown bats shrill testing their radar and my own against the clack of helicopters and the sonic boom of planes. In winter, the house groans, hums with refrigeration, roars and subsides as furnace pilot flares and flickers. At night, alone, I wait to radiators slithering hiss. Buildings are animate. Humans, if we hold our breath, can hear their rhythm ebb and surge against our own. But how to know which sounds will heal, which sounds protect, which sounds will slowly pare away the anvil of the ear. Keep a racket going on the radio, a nurse told me when my girl was born. That way she'll sleep through anything. I played Shaharazad as though cascading notes could shape her dreams in stories which give hold on life. For the second child, they told me, get a clock. Time ticks like mother's heartbeat, thudding in the womb. Familiar sounds will make him think he's safe. I thought of water dripping in the sink, wearing yellowed enamel down to iron. Tonight, I walk in falling snow. My breath becomes blue counterpoint to shift and crack of hackberry trees. Blocks away, dogs howl in pain from noises that drift beyond my range of hearing. Life and death, the mechanical and the natural, great swoop, pound and give and take, which never goes away. Listen, each dawn breaks with the creaking of your cartilage. For hours after death, hair and fingernails will grow, pushing beyond cold flesh like John quotes through accumulated snow. And I'd like to thank Linda very much. Thank you, Alice. I met Alice at a woman's writing conference in Lexington, Kentucky, and it was a wonderful experience. And we've become writing friends through the internet still now. So thanks for being here all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, Janet um, had mentioned um, her friend Pat Cristiano. Pat Cristiano was um, a friend to a lot of us and um, he was a silver tongue devil um, and unfortunately he did pass away but his um, his better half Michelle Gogan sent us videos of him and we are going to I'm going to do my best to try to show him reading a poem right now so we have Pat Cristiano if I could pull this off. Carnival for clinical trials. They zap me pretty good up there. The yes that's better. Now. But should that bastard reappear, Emmett K will put it down, and I may be Jersey bound. Going to ride the cyclotron around and around and around. Going to ride the cyclotron, they'll never put me down. Now, I can't tell the, I can't tell the difference between a proton and a gamma. I just know I'll ride anything to remain in Wonderama. <laughs> Going to ride the cyclotron around and around and around going to ride the cyclotron, they'll never put me down. Now I know about the difference between the proton and the ray. I just know I'll ride any damn thing. 
going to ride the cyclotrons around and around and around. Going to ride the cyclotron. They'll never put me down. Mm. Amen. Okay, but I'm glad y'all got to see him. That's when he was at Sloan, one of the times that he was at Sloan, and it was a nine-month journey for him, and we all miss him dearly. Um, I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> okay. For the poet who stopped screaming one day. This is for the poet who ran out of ammo. This is for the poet who ran out of words. And started screaming one day. I'm sorry. I'm just very emotional with this. This is for the poet who stopped screaming. Because who listens anyway? And maybe just stop to listen for a moment. This is for the silent poet. This is for the poet disappointed in love or in anything. To the point of disappearing but returns. This is also for the artist, also the musician. For the cook and dancer the bottle washer, the beautician. This is for the poet who returns to his words in his world, resembles them, reassembles them carefully, completely alone. This is for the poet alone who rehearses his craft and rehearses his craft and rehearses his craft for why not say nothing. And this is for the picture of the poet on the back of her book, the one that was published to a sort of mild interest. And to her own surprise, she is standing in sunlight on the roof of her building, the one she didn't jump from. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here and bringing his yep. memory to this reading. We really yep. appreciate it. Okay. And Thank um, you. we're going to continue with. Um, the people who are on the waiting list and coming up, we'll have uh, Pauline Finley, Creighton Gwynn, Nagoma Hill, and Carol Stone. Okay, so we'll begin with Pauline. Pauline Finley, you are up. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New can you Year. hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Philip, I'm wearing my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is called Choice of My Choice. I've never performed this before, so I'll just give it a shot here. Dreary is the sight from, my, from this window as Aurora exalts her beautiful face beckoning darkness beneath the rim of her skirt. Night. The mothership of all secrets. Concubine and bedfellow am I, inheriting the phallic odor of strangers as anarchy combats my senses. Brief encounters of stolen moments help subdue obnoxious imbeciles' loneliness, epically increasing the depths of my own. Dank, murky streets swarm with rats, maggots, and sadomasochistic creatures. The repugnant smell of stale perfume expands throughout the air as the reeking stench of bile swirls among sewage, racing to unknown destinations beneath dim street lamp. But as that clock strikes that precious hour, I flee home shedding my remains by the threshold and enter my domicile seconds before Aurora reveals her beauty. She who mollifies self-loathing. Her effervescent ardor caresses my children's tender faces as they stir before awakening. And I am again blessed to hear the crescendo of the concerto, thus being their voices, music to my ears. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Thank you for being here, Pauline. Thank you. And next we go to Creighton Gwynn. Creighton, unmute yourself. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. All right. You can. All right, two poems. Flashes of light. Spiders praying, martyrs clenching, fools clowning, a boy awakening, tentatively reaching for a woman's face, unknowable, but in glimpses as unscrutable as life, rushing full of arbitrary associations. When I first watched this movie, I was as lost as in the woods, yet with time and some smattering of experience, 
I have been able to see through the trees a little more clearly. Understanding of anything comes but in time, be it sensations dancing on screen or within ourselves, no knowledge is ever complete, only gradually spliced together until the bulb overheats, the celluloid snaps, and it all burns away. Thank you. Okay, one more. 110720. What does it say about our disjointed time that sporadic noises outside my window could be construed as either jubilant fireworks or disgruntled gunfire, providing momentary relief from sirens persistent wailing through Brooklyn streets where a souped up sports car can be found parked behind a mobile mitzvah station or in Midtown, a similar proselytizing vehicle idles in traffic alongside a weed world dispensary, a mingling of stubborn faith and anxious self-medicating, spiritual aspirations with spirited hedonism, which somehow captures this fractured moment in this wounded city whose inhabitants clamor and chatter through doomsday. With a prayer or a laugh or simply a shrug, daring the worst to happen, fearing it, yes, why daring it all the same, those of us who didn't flee, but go on embracing this wounded metropolis, ever failing its ideals, ever rough around the edges, ever home to multitudes, singing themselves sane. Thank you. Thank you, Creighton. All right. Next up, we have Nagoma Hill. Hey. Hey, welcome. Happy New Year. So, um, I'm going to d dedicate these two short poems to Miguel Algarin. He was one of the founders of the New Eurekan Poets Cafe, and he passed late a uh, uh, couple of weeks ago. These two poems are from my series I'm working on called the Corona Chronicles. This is this is the day after Cashmas. Twas the day after Cashmas, problems piled high. The Grinch played golf still fiddling while Rome burns, pardoning God's sons of Hitler, suffering delusion that the castle was not crumbling. He mimics Henny Penny, screaming the sky is falling as we watch a meltdown, praying that it holds up at least until the coronation. But remember, on Cashmere's morn, a bomb exploded in Nashville. It certainly was a strange way to celebrate the birthday of the Prince of Peace. There's a plague hanging like a cloud above the planet, taunting revelations to prove its existence. Holy babble thumpers prepare for the rapture. The truth is wearing a mask. That's one. Up. Um, this, this is called a pass, past puff. The ancestors crowded the kitchen, knocking food onto the floor eating before their red cracked plate could be piled high with food and served from ancient recipes in DNA passed down from mouth to ear. Water flooded the floor. Oshun made her presence known. Pounded yam, snail, and a goosey stew prepared. Osala accepts these prayers and offerings on this ninth trip around the sun. I'm having trouble remembering what day it is. Blame it on COVID. Everyone is masked or quarantined. It seemed like Groundhog Day last week disappeared. I di didn't know it was gone. It's a bit disturbing when I can count the number of my friends that are still on the planet on 10 fingers. The world is at my fingertips, but I miss the feel of earth between my toes. Though I'm a city dweller, I lived on hillsides many lives ago. Years create some foolish thought that time can be measured. It's only a mirage spawned by mortals, but who is to say what is real or how long it takes to build a pyramid when all existence is immediate and past, present, future is synonymous. Thank you, Nagoma. Thank you very much for being here today. Thanks, um, for, being here. Thanks for doing this. You're welcome. Um, 
at this point, is there anybody who's here who is on the wait list that um, I haven't said your name out loud? It's that Carol, message? Carol Stone. Yeah, I have you on the list. So you're next, Carol. And then Lou Grouper, I have also coming up. But anybody besides those two on the wait list that I might have missed? If, that, if so, just put me a message in the chat for me. And uh, next up, we have Carol Stone. Go ahead, Carol. Greetings from Verona, New Jersey. I wish I were in Manhattan hearing all of those poems. Okay, a woman. I am tired of being a woman, sick of my hair no longer blonde, tired of the face I see in the mirror. I've had all I can take of the loneliness that hangs over me like a dead mouth. The blind and the deaf, the frightened, no longer dream. The sun rises without purpose. I'm fed up with the moon over the trees. I can't stand the stars. I want to fall in love with this world as if it were a first amour. Forgive those who left without saying goodbye. I too will become a shadow and feel the icy wool of the earth. I'll leave behind my human light, fall asleep like a new mother who stayed up all night walking her baby. I remember summers at the beach, the clouds dipping low over the ocean, where the waves made me feel like staying alive until I became a woman who on a day, ordinary as breathing, took her coffee in the morning. I don't want to go on as a lily on the hillside. Art and Longevity. The Lieblers, married 72 years, died today in Springs, East Hampton, two hours apart, ages 96 and 97. It's time to go, sweetie, Gerson said, still painting. Told Judith, she who made exquisite broided silver handbags carried by Jackie Kenny, Kennedy, Princess Diana, Mrs. Bush, in the shape of fans, eggs, boxes, pigs. You could hardly fit anything into their tiny space. A lipstick, a hundred dollar bill, limited editions, which is what we all are in the end. Would you rather date T.S. Eliot or Ezra Pound? I thought he was celibate, this American turned Brit. I want to talk about line endings. Tom wants to get me into bed. Before he proposed to Valerie, he was earning a banker's salary, had become boring as well as horny, sending pound verses that were porno. After the wasteland, I'm shocked, but until pounds edits, that poem never rocked. Not that I prefer Ezra's cantos overflowing like him with braggadocio, Yet, I love his poetry idea, keep it accurate, keep it clear. Casting himself as poetry's grandee, pound broadcast from Mussolini. Insanity, a ruse, he escaped the noose. I choose him, but I can't forgive his fascism. Well, we have Lou Grouper on deck. Is Lou still here? I'm here. Okay, Lou, you're up. And when if Anthony comes, he's next. Go ahead, Lou. Um, I use the Japanese concept kintsugi. Uh, when we heal something, we like to smooth over where the two parts are mended. The Japanese concept is the opposite, where they want to show the stitches to show where it's healed. The political revolution, a birthday wish to Bernie Sanders. I see the stitches in the cracks where the pieces are mended. The holistic kintsugi of a new way of seeing when the corruption all around us is washed away in a sea of rebirth, almost as if evolution builds to a revolutionary rupture in the old Trumpian corporate capitalist culture where the neo-fascist twist is overthrown. This next poem, uh, I always like to read somebody else's. Ross Gay, a small needful fact is that Eric Garner worked for some time for the Parks and Rec Horticultural Department, which means perhaps that with his very large hands, perhaps in all likelihood, he put gently into the earth 
some plants, which most likely, some of them in all likelihood, continue to grow, continue to do what such plants do, like house and feed small and necessary creatures, like being pleasant to touch and smell, like uh, comforting sunlight into food, Conver excuse me, like converting sunlight into food, like making it easier for us to breathe. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. All right. Um, so again, I don't think, I think actually I got through everybody on the list and our wait list for this time period. And the next group is ready to go at four o'clock. So is there anybody still here who is on the wait list? And Herendine checked in. She's on the next group though. She's in the next group. So I'm not gonna, that's for the next host. So I think actually this is a break to go get something to eat and come back at four o'clock and uh, take a break, I think. Otherwise, um, anything, any you want to do? Uh, thank, you for, or thank you for thank you for setting this thank up. You thank you so all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Can we just thank stay? Thank you, Linda. Linda. you could stay on here and just go and do something Hi, and guys. come back and check on. But um, the next Hi, host Patricia. is going to be Joshua. Everybody, I'm just going to say the next host is Joshua Meander, and we have a reading list that's posted on Facebook if you haven't seen it already. So um, that will be coming up at four o'clock and people will be coming in. So you can stay here. Um, we're asking if, the, if we get to, we, we only can have 100 people in the room at a maximum time. So if for the six o'clock reading and the eight o'clock reading, some of you guys are still here. And we have to make room for them. We're going to ask you to watch it on Facebook Live because it's also streaming on Facebook Live. But until we reach like 75 or 80 people, I don't mind everybody staying here. I think the reception is a little bit better. And um, so, yeah, so we're going to take a break until um, 4 o'clock when the next host takes over.